My name is Paul Siffrey with the Stebbin Hawkins Clinic of the Carolinas. One of the important tools that orthopedic surgeons utilize in the office to both treat and diagnose conditions are x-rays or radiographs. I want to spend a few moments with you to discuss x-rays and specifically knee x-rays and how they relate to arthritis. The first x-ray I want to review are my typical x-rays when I see a new patient for a knee problem. When I see a new patient, I typically will get four different views of the knee. I like prefer to get my x-rays with the patient standing up so I can truly determine what their knee looks like when their body weight is going through their knees. So this first view is called an AP view or a, an anterior to posterior view. The second view is a similar x-ray, however I have my patients stand and squat about 45 degrees and it lets us see a different component of their knee joint space. The third x-ray is a lateral or a side view. And then the final x-ray is what we call a patellofemoral view where we can see how the kneecaps fit in to the end of the femur. A simple acronym that I use when evaluating knee x-rays is the word arthritis. And I'll go through each letter to tell you what I'm looking for. So the first letter is A, and A stands for the alignment. I get an overall idea of the alignment of someone's legs, whether they be in varus or bow-legged or in valgus or knock-kneed. With the advent of digital radiography, we have the luxury of being able to be as very specific as to even measure angles of the knee joint. So for instance, this patient has an angle of 5.1 degrees of valgus, which is normal alignment. This is what we would expect in a patient as these x-rays are normal. The second letter is R, and that stands for reduction of joint space. I look at any joint space narrowing in the inner or medial compartment, the lateral or outer compartment, or also underneath the patella. This lets me know the extent of the arthritic process that is affecting these knees. The third letter is T, and that stands for trauma. I look for any evidence of a traumatic injury to the bones. This could be something as simple as a fracture or a break in the bone. We can even see evidence of fluid in the knee or what we call a knee effusion. Typically on a lateral or the side x-ray right above the patella or the kneecap, sometimes we can see a large amount of fluid which is indicative of an effusion or in, in the traumatic since it could be called a hemarthrosis, which stands for blood in the knee joint. The fourth letter is H, and that stands for the health of the bones. And what I'm talking about here is bone density. What does the density or the strength of the bone looks like? It gives us an overall feeling of, of whether the patient may be having some component of osteoporosis or thinning out of the bones. If we're concerned about osteoporosis, there are other tests that we can order called a DEXA bone scan to evaluate the extent of osteoporosis. The next letter is R and we utilize that in the word growth plates and what I look for is is there any evidence that the growth plate is open or there's still growth left in the knee joints. We would not expect this to see open growth plates in someone over 16 However, in the young patient, we do evaluate the integrity of their growth plates. The next letter is I, and that stands for implants. I utilize these x-rays to determine do I see any evidence of hardware or screws or implants or basically evidence of prior surgery to the knee. The next letter is T, and that stands for tissue we're able to see soft tissue shadows. For example, we see the bone very well visualized, however, surrounding the bone where this gray area is, that's soft tissue. That is muscle 
and fatty tissue that we can appreciate on the x-rays. The next letter is I, and that stands for ischemia, and ischemia relates to blood flow to the knee. Oftentimes, if a patient has calcified vessels or poor circulation, we can actually see calcified vessels on an x-ray, and quite frankly, ischemia can be a cause of knee pain. The last letter is S, and that stands for sclerosis or spurs or even bone cysts. In a knee that's got arthritis, oftentimes you will see bone spurs at the edge of the bone edges. You'll see increased density right below the joint space, which is sclerosis. And sometimes you can see hollowed out areas, which are evidence of bone cysts. These three things are all evidence of a knee that has arthritis. In my next video, I want to show you several examples of pathology within the knee.